Right, my name is Joshua, I'm 19 and I'm a photographer and a video videographer from Hull. As a photographer, people have referred to me as Josh or as my online portfolio, which is Temponex. It mainly came from when I started back in secondary school, I took up photography then and I bought my first camera in 2017 and I've just been doing it since. A lot of it has been like self-taught, so apart from like the help I've had from my auntie, it's just been looking up online, going out and doing it and that sort of thing. Have you studied it? Yeah, so at the moment I'm in my last year of college studying photography there. I've done it for the past two years at college as well and I plan to go to university in September to do photography there as well for three years. Is it just photography you're doing or are you going to do the video side as so, well? I mainly do photography, but I also dabble in videography from time to time as well, so... So are you going to focus that you on... Photography, on yeah. It's going to always be more sided with photography, but I do like doing videography on the side as well. Why did you get into video? It was just something that I knew that I was going to do eventually anyways. Like, when I first started doing photography, when I first started getting... Well, when I first bought my camera in 2017, I knew that Videography was always going to be something I'd get into. It was just the equipment and the right time and place. And looking, I got lucky and managed to do my first sort of music video back in July 2019, I think. But a lot of people don't realise the amount of time and effort it takes to obviously learn the equipment. And then once you've taken the photo or recorded your videos, you've got to go and edit them as well, which that can take a lot longer than the shoots itself. So when I'm working as a photographer on my nightlife shoots, for example, I could spend about three, four, five hours shooting, but then take six, seven hours to edit because the amount of photos and then making sure they're all as perfect as they can be. Well, by now it is pretty second nature, so it is pretty quick, but I can understand that like, if it's a new environment, then it can take a bit of time to just get it right, make, just making small adjustments and then in your camera for like shutter speed, aperture, your ISO, your white balance, for your flash power and all that sort of stuff. Why can't you just use auto? Because auto is just what the camera thinks is correct and it's not what could be correct so it can, like, I don't know the word, um, <laughs> I forgot the word. But what was you saying? It's gonna, uh, it, comp it can have compensate for the highlights or compensate for the shadows, but when you shoot it in fully manual, you get to control that. You get to get the photos or the videos to where you want it specifically. Would you say auto bad? Like uh, I wouldn't say it's bad, like because when I first started out, I used auto, and even now and again, I'll use like shutter priority, or aperture priority, which is auto mode in a sense. But when you know how to use the settings like properly and you know exactly which one, like what each setting does down to the burn, it is better to use manual because then you have more control over the outcome of your photos. Well, at first it wasn't, like, because it sort of falls into the way I got the name Temponics to begin with. So, Temponics is meant to be like a music term, so you got obviously tempo, then I put the suffix onyx onto the end, which obviously you get Temponics from that. And that was before I even started doing, like, my professional work. I just thought of it and thought, I'll write that down if I need to use it, I'll put it there. And in July 2018, I did my first band shoot, and then I remembered me, I've got that name, and that's what I've been going by as my professional sort of side since. So you kind of got into it by accident? Yeah, like, it was because two of my friends, they started a band and they were doing a, a gig at the Adelphi and I took some photos there for them. It wasn't a paid thing or anything, and I didn't expect to be paid because it was my first one. But I really enjoyed it, I enjoyed the environment, I enjoyed the people, the energy of the event, and I just knew I wanted to do this more. And from there, it slowly branched out to other events such as nightclubs, bars, DJs, even things like weddings that don't mix in. It's just an adventure, and it's just about trying different things and knowing what you like, what you don't like, and that sort of thing. Well, like, again, it's a, it was about me like trying a bunch of different things. Like, um, at first, I was just doing what everyone did, taking photos of, like flowers and stuff, because I didn't know really what what I wanted oh, to do. Yeah, it's just easy and convenient. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and like, 
I don't know if I'll be able to. Pets. Like, <laughs> You've got pets. Yeah. Pets are over. Like, um, like when I first got my camera as well, we did have a dog, and I used to take photos of him. Like, if I can find it, like they'll be up on there. And like, I did not know what the hell I was doing. Like, the white balance was out. I think some of them like orange and blue. I was like, why is this happening? <laughs> so, yeah. But from there, like. When I got to college, I was inspired by another photographer in my class called Marshall, and he was an urban and an urban explorer. And he gave me, well, he didn't tell me, but he gave me the inspiration to try going up somewhere high, like a car park. And even though I've got a natural fear of heights, I love the adrenaline that it gave me. And from there, I got into urban and urban exploring photography. So I've been to abandoned buildings all over the UK, been on rooftops in different cities. And it is, it's unique and it's not as unique as it used to be because a lot of Instagram people will do that for sort of photography. But it's something I enjoy doing and it's a bit iffy really because you're not really meant to do them. But yeah, I don't condone anyone goes do them. It's a tiny bit illegal. <laughs> yeah, it is in a sense because it is trespassing but it's a different side of the law. Like if I've been, I've had the police come quite a few times and all they can legally do is ask you to leave and if you refuse to leave that's when you can be arrested so if the police do come or authorities do come and they ask me to leave I just leave straight away I'll just be honest with them stay calm be honest with them and if they ask you to leave leave yes. it's mainly like if you're there to steal stuff oh yeah or, like, like if you're there to vandalize or like to actually like commit a crime then fair enough like like there's kids for example there's a popular popular building the whole called Lord Line which most people will know about it it's on the docks a lot of kids will go there thinking it's funny to start smashing up the place and causing fires and stuff and that's when it starts becoming a safety hazard whereas there's people like me who just go there to take photos have a bit of fun and there always is a risk that carries especially in abandoned buildings where you don't know what's going to happen like you don't know if things have changed and that's why I always take like extra precautions when I'm in those buildings, regardless of how many times I've been there. Makes it look better though, doesn't it? When it's down now. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not when it's on, don't be in the building when it's on fire. <laughs> like, I've done, I did a photo when, just after a fire had been put out in there, which was a set of mass photos that I did with one of my friends called Ollie, and they will be up, up there, I guess. But they blew up my Instagram from around 600 followers to over two, two and a half thousand in about a week or so. So it's just about taking the opportunities as they come, but just don't be stupid when you're doing stuff like that. And there's been like there's good things and bad things about both, and it's really about the access accessibility of it. Like because I don't drive, a lot of the like, air, like abandoned places are outside of Hull. Like obviously in Hull there are quite a few, but um, there's places like Driftfield that have like the abandoned RAF base, Doncaster, Huddersfield, Liverpool, Manchester, and it's, Obviously, I'm being able to explore as many as I want to, but they hopefully I will do in time. So, at the moment, my favourite thing to do is my nightlife work. What would you say your priority is? Is it taking a good picture and getting likes, or is it making money? It, it can be a mix of both, because with me, since I'm also like doing professional photography and being a freelancer, I've obviously got to make some sort of living as well. But if I didn't enjoy doing in doing it to begin with, I wouldn't do it because the amount of time that I put in, it, it is ridiculous. Like um, I'm a resident photographer for a bar or two bars in Hull called Dirty Dicks and Silvers. I will work five hours there on the night, and then I'll have to work around three, four between three to six hours a night editing them, and that it it, it can be quite annoying and quite frustrating at times, especially like if it's been quite a rough shift because there are times where you see stuff you don't want to see and there are people that are quite arsy and like are a bit annoying and there's been it's been quite a few times where people think i'm a female as well like a genuine female because of my hair and that's not a fun thing to deal with because they've forced just forced themselves onto you because obviously they're drunk they don't know what to do it what they're doing and yeah, it's quite frustrating, really, at times. But like, there have been like, I've also got to be careful as well because there are times where people will try and steal my equipment. But I've just got to enforce that they shouldn't be touching my equipment to begin with. But some people don't listen, and that's when I just go to the bouncer and just say, "There's someone that's being a bit, I'll oh, trying to steal my stuff. Can you just deal with them and dealt with?" Yeah, I imagine 
imagine that's an, that's another issue in it, the security yeah. aspect of it. Yeah. I mean, like all my equipment's insured and stuff, so if something is damaged or something is stolen, then I'm, I'm covered for that. But it's the case of if I wasn't, or if it's someone that's new and they don't realise that these things can happen, then it's, you know, it's just one of those things. Like, it seems like everything I do, there's some sort of danger to it. <laughs> it's good for you. Yeah. All, all the good photographers got some danger to it. For you, all the flower photographers just got really offended then. <laughs> They're all shit. <laughs> What's the danger thing? They've got hair fever. <laughs> oh, but it's just like you to get a good picture. You've generally got to have you've got to do some level of danger generally. Uh, a good picture is something different. Yeah. And that's generally where the danger comes. Cause it's, yeah, at people times. People haven't done it because it's dangerous generally. Yeah. Like going real high up to get that perfect shot. Yeah. Like, I don't like. I don't condone people putting their lives in danger though for a photo. I mean, if they want to do it, like go for it, but I don't condone it. Mm. Like, you won't see me climbing up like a crane without a harness or anything, like right. just to get a photo. Like, yeah. that, that's a bit ridiculous. Mm. Like, the top of the Empire yeah. State Building. Oh, yeah. Or like, um, like hanging off the side of a building with just your hands and stuff. Like, I've sat on the edge of buildings for photos before, like, but. Like even then, that's still incredibly stupid and incredibly dangerous. But people are actually like hang off with just their hands. It's like for me, I won't be able to do that. So if I can't do it, you really shouldn't either. How did you develop your like style? It, it's the same with photography, really. It's just a process you've got to do over and over again. Like um, it, you can't have like a definitive like style. Like you're always developing it, and if you're not improving, then there's clearly something wrong with what you're doing. So like when I first started it was like I used to do very saturated photos and you don't notice these things until like you've developed your style and you look back and you're like oh yeah that was a bit overdone. There was some, if I can find them, like there was some that I took in Blackpool of the sunset and I had completely overexposed, like not overexposed it but like overdid the blues and the yellows thinking oh that looks really nice that. But then looking back at them like a few months later I was just like Ugh. What's that? <laughs> so different lenses can create like different sort of effects and different types of compression. So at the moment, I think you're using a 18 to 135, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. So a wider, wider, a wider focal length, like 18 mil, like you can get really close up to someone, but the compression in the background won't be too great. Whereas if you used to use a longer lens, like a 70 mil or a 85 mil, it would or compress the background more which is really good for things like portraits like because the thing that makes portraits stand out more is when you get a blurred background and you obviously have like out first elements burka and that sort of thing so, and that is better with a low aperture and a longer focal length obviously you have to stand back a bit but maybe if it gets yeah, a better that's, photo that's the issue like i, I, I had a 300 millimeter on the other one i had to take pictures from the other side of the room <laughs> yeah, obviously as well, like, because you use the same camera as me, and the HD is a crop sensor body, so you get it's like a long, oh, all your lenses are slightly longer as well, which is a bit annoying. But if you do things like sports photography, on, as we discussed, astrophotography, then like that can be quite useful, and you can use that to your advantage. But I don't take pictures, so I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't use it the same way you do, so. Do people that use the same camera in different ways, it's weird. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't, because I don't need loads of lenses, because I'm yeah. doing video, so yeah. I do a lot of it in it, the edit. It depends on what you need to do as well, like, yeah. if you're like, for example, you're a portrait photographer, then like a 50mm, 85mm, 105mm, that will be like your main lenses. Yeah. Whereas you do like landscapes or like interior photography, you'd want a wider lens like a 10 to 18, or if you're on full frame, like a 15 to 35 or something like that. Yeah, just, I still have the wide angle as much. Yeah. I, I mean, use everything now, but. I mean, like at the moment with my nightlife stuff, I use a 24 to 70mm, mm. and that's f2.8 all the way through. It's a heavy lens at times, but that just gives me the versatility to, if I'm doing like crowd shots or shots of people, I can have 24, but if I'm getting like more detailed shots or shots of the barn, that sort of thing, I can zoom into 70mm if need be. How many lenses would you say people need? It, it depends, again, it depends on what you're doing. So if like you're doing video work or photography, and if you're doing those, like what sort of videos you're doing, what sort of photography you're doing. So it really comes down to what you're doing. So I, 
at the moment I use a 2470, a 10-18, a 50mm, that's pretty much all I use. Like, so my 50mm I'll use for a portrait, it's 2470 I use like as my all-around go-to lens if I'm running and gunning. And then my 10 to 18 will be if I'm doing landscapes, long exposures, and that sort of thing. That, that's the thing, isn't it? You need something a bit versatile when you're willing and good. Yeah. Which is where the video part comes in. It's different, yeah. different things you do. I think when I shot my first music video as well with Mally, or Mally Wardy, like I was using my 2470 with that as well. And the more you zoom in, the more camera check you do get. Why? <laughs> uh, um, because when we my first one, I didn't realise like a lot of things that you take for granted so we didn't use like a full track we used an instrumental um, with only the female vocals in so he like Mally was sort of freestyling it in a sense so when it came to lip syncing that in post that was really difficult and even if you look at the video now like you can tell it's not lip synced up, lip -synced up properly because I couldn't do it it was too difficult because there's no track there that's fucking yeah like but I didn't realise it like I can't blame Mally like because I don't think he'd done a music video before either and I, you can't blame me because like I hadn't done one before either the first thing I said to you don't want to have a speaker next to the camera yeah which we did but yeah. we didn't take you didn't yeah, tell, you didn't tell me you was a track. <laughs> yeah, well, like in comparison to like um, like the last one I did in December with Lyric, for example, like I was using a speaker near my camera. He was like at first he was just lip syncing it, like it, um, with like the full track. But I told him like you need to actually like perform it, and after that that went quite well. And to be fair, that was quite a fun music video to film as well. People need to perform it because they perform it to the track. Whereas yeah. the lip sync, they're always slightly out. And yeah, and you, it might not seem noticeable at first when you're first filming it, but when you're editing it, it's really noticeable. Oh yeah. Few, few friends, few friends out, it's a yeah, there are times where it doesn't matter. Like um, I did a promotional video for a band called Read on Love at the Adelphi, like a few months before I did lyrics, and that was just set to one of their tracks called Obsidian. So they want an E for lip, for lip syncing with that, and I finished that in the same night that I recorded it as well because it was only the yeah. Yeah, like um, to be fair, you did teach me about the function as well, where you can just sync it up. Yeah, like before that, I was doing it manually, and then you told me that I was like, stiff so much time." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, my Canon HD, the twenty-four to seventy mil, and if need be, my flash, which I can't remember the name of it to save my life. It's like a Canon E. EXO 580 version 2 or something like that. What, do you have like a portable light as well? Um, my flash is my portable light. I do have like a portable light, it's a rotor light Neo 2, but I, I haven't had much time to experiment with it. I used it like, at a gig trying, to, trying it out with a flash, but because it doesn't have like second curtain sync or anything like that, it's not really suited for that. The That was before I got my and wireless triggers as well for my camera, so and the, those can do second curtain sync. So I assume I should be able to use it use it for that now. It's like it's both similar, it's both different. Like like I said, like the settings are like the biggest like difference to me. Like and he stops saying like I say it too much, you know. You're just gonna be going through like you said like one, <laughs> two, three, four. But yeah, it, it's mainly the settings that I find to be different. I've with my like camera movements and stuff, I move use my camera composition for that mainly so like just using things like the rules of rule of thirds and just not being stupid with it like oh, don't cut the hands off or don't cut the head off like it's annoying for me as well at times because because I'm aware of these things when I'm shooting the photo when I'm looking in the LCD screen I sometimes can take longer to take a photo that I, I, do, like, I do that now. and it annoys me because if I'm if they're not aware that I'm taking the photo like especially in like a nightclub or something so I have my camera up to my face and I'll have my flash like that up in the air and my diffuser is is massive so you'll you'll see it from a mile off so like before when I used to shoot with my camera on, like my flash on camera, like it wasn't as noticeable, but now thing, you just see this lifting in the air and it's just this giant beauty dish. And it, it, it's hard to get stealth shots now because of that. Yeah, and it, it, then it becomes a lot more fast, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's better picture quality, don't get me wrong, like shooting off, like you flash off camera, it can be a bit awkward at first, but it is better for furs and stuff yeah, like. Yeah, on camera flash. Yeah. yeah. Never use it. Yeah, like when I first was using it, like I went from using like a square diffuser on my flash to using a Gary Fong one, and then now because I shoot off camera, I need one that like soften the light and focus yeah. it more on one place. So now I use a beauty dish diffuser for that. 
there have been quite a few, but I think like, my biggest achievement had to be one of my first ones, which was when I got one of my photos put in the exhibit back at just 16 in 2017. So um, there's a gallery in Hull called the Hip Galleries, which is stands for the Hull Independent Photography Gallery. And they host a festival every year called Hip Fest. And because I'd done volunteering there from time to time, they were like, what well, would you want a photo put in it? I was like, yeah, that's awesome. And I remember, I still got the photo now, it's in my living room. The photo was taken when I was doing NCS, which is like a four week program where you go like away and get skills and stuff. And I'd taken a photo in the first week of a lake house with my 70 to 300 when I used to use that. And the, um, that got all printed and put up in the exhibit. And I remember when I first went to go see it, like that filled, filled me with so much confidence. So I was like, I've had, or I've got a photo in the exhibit at 16. Like, where else can I go with it? And that, like from then I've had more photos in more exhibits and that sort of thing. And eventually I hope to have my own exhibit, like where it's just my photos and yeah, that sort of thing. So the one that's had the most reactions, like in terms of like social media, would be one that I had on Instagram, which was just after I started posting the posting the mass photos I was having up before in Lordline. It was one where it was my mate Ollie. He was squatting on a bit of rubble and he was using his vape for a, a smoke cloud. And as the smoke came out of his mouth, he moved forward with the mask, so it looked like a set of wings on his ears. And that got around between 6,000 and 7,000 likes, and that, that blew me away. Like, I didn't even realise it would have got that many. But personally, as, even though I love those, like, they're some of my favourites. I think one of my favourite ones I've taken recently was when I went to Hull Fair last year. I wanted to go on the Ferris wheel for quite a few years, and I bit the bullet this or last year, and I thought, right, I'm going up. And it was just as sunset was about to end. So I got a photo of the fair from above. And you can just see the sunset on the left, just so it's about to leave. And then the blue hour starting to come in on the right. And it's just like a really balanced image. And that is one of my favorite images. I've got it up in my bedroom as a print. Because it is an amazing photo. I love it. <laughs> and that was going to be the one I thought you were going to say. And I yeah. thought that was the one I was going to get the most likes as well. To be fair, it did get quite a lot of attention because when I posted it on to quite a few Facebook groups, I got a message from the guy who runs the whole fair Facebook page. He was like, we love the photo, we are it to post it. And I was like, yeah, go for it. That's fine, as long as I'm credited. And like a lot of people like got attention. Oh, I got quite a bit of attention from that because it was one of Hull Fair's like biggest liked photos of the year, which that to me when I heard that, like that made me feel really and good in myself. That was gonna be your biggest yeah. most well reacted. Yeah, on Facebook it's one of my most reacted, yeah. but in terms of Instagram, like Instagram is where like my hobbyist stuff goes and that's where the bigger reactions are and obviously that got over six thousand, seven thousand likes. How did they approach you to get the like, user page? Was it literally just a message? Yeah, it was literally just a message on Messenger. It was just like, hi, I run the Facebook page, I'm alright to post it there. And I said, yeah, that's fine, go for it, just make sure you credit me, and they just posted it from there. In what terms? Um, in terms of like, yeah, for yeah, like. I think mainly, like, the main thing I'm proud of is the people that have been, like, generally around me actually want to help me progress my career, because. Like I'm doing, I do the same thing for other people. Like if I've got a gig that I can't make it to and it's a paid thing, I will message like every photographer that I know. Like I've got a gig on this date between these times, it costs this much. Would you be able to cover it? Whereas I could just simply turn around and just be like, well, I don't want, I don't want to tell anyone else because I don't want anyone else to have that gig. And it's, it's like if you're so if you're a photographer or videographer and you're selfish like that, then you're not really going to get anywhere. So I simply like you've got to work with others. You get a bad rep as well though. Yeah, you get the reputation of that photographer that doesn't, like, is selfish. Mm. And like, that's the last thing I want to be. So I do try and help out others when I can. Obviously you help me out quite a bit, I help you out quite a bit. And it's the same vice versa, really. Um, it's prob probably anything that puts my life in danger, really. Or like puts the life of some like someone else's life in danger that I won't want to do. So like, oh, when I get a shot or like, of me like wrapping a, like a vest on me hanging off a building, it's like, yeah, well, I get that. But I don't want to do that because I, if you slip and fall, like, it's, it won't be liable on me, but it's, it's just something that I don't really want to see. Well, do you remember the, do this the pretty video I did in Lord Lang? And was in the side building. I think so, yeah. There was shit everywhere hanging from it. I, was like, I just thought he was going to die. <laughs>
<laughs> the building falls. So much just hanging off the so high. Yeah, well, that's a lot of life, yeah. Well, you, you went in the um, building close to the water, didn't you? Yeah, we were Yeah, I barely go in that one because the bottom floor is full of asbestos. Mm. Like, if I ever go in there, I go in through the back and go straight up the stairs. Mm. And then even then, it's rare that I go in there because I mainly stick to the other two buildings. There was more on the left, we didn't go in the right side, so that was a bit yeah. more dangerous. Yeah, like, I think I've not fully explored that building because of the asbestos, I just go straight to the roof if I'm going in. <coughs> Wasn't aware there's asbestos in there? Yeah, like, if well, you go, like, <coughs> if you go through, like, the garage front entrance, you can just smell it. Mm. Like, and the last thing I want, like, especially because I'm asthmatic as well, I don't want to get, like, yeah. any asbestos-related illnesses. It's probably more sensitive to it as well. Yeah, yeah, so, like, I've dealt with depression and anxiety, for the past six odd years, and it has something that has affected me a lot. Like, it has got me down a lot, and it's only like in the last year and a half that I've just learned this is something I've just got to deal with. It's not all I can do about it. It's even the case of I can't go on medication for it either, because back in February last year, I got something called light treatment or phototherapy, which isn't a photography thing, <laughs> like it might sound like, but I suffer quite badly with eczema as well, and that was to fix that. And one of the side effects of that is I can't go on antidepressants because it can mess with that as well, which is very annoying at times because that means that I can't medicate to deal with it, I've just got to get on with it if I can. Isn't there anything like a variation of the drugs? That you know, like there might be, but like, like different types, but they are generally all the same. That's yeah, the just way. like when I was like when I was getting it, it, just said don't. You can't go on antidepressants while you're getting it on, like even after you've had it, because there's a really chance your ex might come back. And it's still like I've still got parts of eczema, but it's not as bad as it used to be. Like before I had my phototherapy, it was 90% of my body was covered with it, and it was so difficult to do anything. See, that's that's the thing that's really weird is the f like, it's not like because I've got social anxiety, so in social situations I am really awkward and I tend to overthink things. But when I'm doing something like my photography, at first I will be a bit nervous, but once I get into it, like it's just like a continuing ball. Like I'm on a roll, I'm going. V, I've got this. I don't really think about it, but it's always there in the back of my mind, especially in my nightclub work, even if I'm confident doing something, like if I'm getting a shot of someone when I don't know I'm taking it, it's still in my mind, like, would this person like get annoyed that I'm taking this photo? And V, what if something happens? And yeah, so it's, it's always there. People will say you can't have anxiety and depression and be in a room full of people and do the job that you do. There are days, trust me, where I will literally wake up and be like, I'm letting my colleagues know I cannot come in because I'm ill, but it's actually because I don't want the world to see me because I am awful and I'm ugly and yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it, 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 it's different days. Uh, it's different days and like if it's worse or bad. If it's better, if it's worse, and there's not no way you can predict it. Like I can go to bed feeling real happy and then wake up feeling like the worst person alive and why am I alive? And yeah, it's not fun to deal with at times. No, I ask like, I hate people. <laughs> to be fair. Yeah, my job is to deal with people. It's like I hate my job is to deal with people. I deal with everything. After I leave here, it's just like thank God he's gonna hate him. <laughs> I do. I don't, I don't want to be around people. You just prefer to be on your own at times. Yeah, I, I prefer. I mean, I'm, 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 to be fair, though, like to be fair, like I've met more people in the time that I've been doing this job than I have ever done. Like because like back in school and stuff, I didn't have many friends, and I was picked on and stuff for being ginger and being fat and all that sort of stuff and being weird. Yeah, yeah. Come on, <laughs> <Chesney>. <laughs> Oh, like, oh. yeah, I got Chesney and stuff, like, well, yeah, it was. I'll just shout with that, like, I'm cool. <laughs> I have diagnosed Yeah, it's alright. But yeah, it has been, like, tough, and like, I still don't know why my mental health started. I assume it is partly because I got bullied and stuff, but just everything sort of came together in year nine, my mental health, and, like, the, my start of doing photography and all that sort of stuff. It just seems that like it was a good and bad year for me. So you say photography gives you a focus and something to like Yeah, like, if I, like, I haven't done, like, I'm more, I'm, I'm both a hobbyist and a professional, so, like, I'll do paid work or I'll do paid work. 
But recently, like I've noticed that I'm doing more paid work than my hobbyist work, and that's because college is really sucking the fun out of it for me. Like, for my, like, for example, my last project lasted three months. I did about five shoots in that time, one of which was like on my own, but all in college time. And it's just because the amount of work the pile on top of you, it's more written work than anything. What, what, what sort of work do you have to do for the college? Well, you? when you first start a project, like you're not allowed to do any ideas generation around like the subject. You've got to do a bunch of research. If you just use internet sources, then you get in trouble for that because you've got to use books from the library and magazines and all that sort of stuff. Then you do your ideas generation. Then you've got to do weeks and weeks of shoots if you've got time to do that because of power more work on top of you. I mean, even now in my final project, like I'm still in my research phase and ideas generation when really I should be doing like it should be doing like my fair shoot and stuff and I think the like say that my professional work is an excuse for me not coming in and, and all and stuff like that when it really isn't like if I've got a job to do I'm gonna put my job on my clients over my college work because yeah. I've been I've been like I'm not gonna name the college specifically because it's not relevant but I've been in the college for three years and it's got like the amount of respect that they've had for me and people around me in the college has just got worse and worse over the years and it's this year specifically where I'm just like, well, if you're not going to respect me, why should I respect you back? But isn't like, when you're taking pictures, isn't that what, isn't that what the course is? Yeah, like, well they say, oh, well, they say oh, we're preparing, like, yeah, yeah, well, they say, oh, we're preparing you for like, the real world and preparing for clients and stuff. Just to put in perspective what it's like in my class, you're not allowed to have headphones in, you're not allowed to go on your phone, you got to ask when you go to the toilet. Fuck that shit. Yeah. So you're not. Tr so you're making us. Pre you're preparing us for client work in the real world by tell. By basically acting like primary school kids. So they have. But even so they have to like do textbook pictures like what. Yeah. So basically, you'd have to go to the library, book out books, scan images in, and then like describe the images, like an analyze them, and it's like, well, it's yeah, a lot of fairy yeah, there. yeah. And it's like it annoys me as well because like there's, there's certain tutors in my class, like we have like two or three tutors. One of them had the nerve to turn around to another student in my class and they do like product photography as professional stuff professional as well. They turned around to them and said, Oh well there's thousands of photographers that'll blow your work out the water and like that stuff infuriates me. It's like you you're putting a work down like you're putting a work down for no reason, like, and this this tutor, like, they, they're they quite big on like, oh, I've been doing it for so and so years, so you should listen to me, I'm excited by this, so you should be, it's like, well, no, it's not like that, like, if you've been doing it for that many years, good on you, if you're good, good on you. Um, I had a guy come here who told me he'd been doing wedding photography for 30 years, so I said, okay, bring your stuff in, I'll hold up. But it was trash, wasn't it? <laughs> and, I'm very honest. As you know, and Did you turn around and tell me it was shit. I told him <laughs> all them pictures by one are terrible. Yeah. I've been doing this better, it's like, like, well, you should know better than, like. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing it, it's about the skill level and, like, your passion for it. Yeah, but like, that, that was his response to the first year, I've been doing it better. You're like, but then you should know better, you should know how to take a picture, you yeah. should know that you do not turn that picture like that. Yeah. You have borders and all that. It's like, mate, stop it. <laughs> And that was wedding photography, borders, and everything was black and white a lot. I mean, uh, like, in terms of black and white like, photography and stuff, there is a place for it, but it just depends, like, if it works for the photo, if it's relevant, yeah. that sort of thing. Like, there's always some black and white in weddings. Yeah. There's some pictures look shit. Yes. Yeah, black so and white sorts them out. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, like, that that's is a big relate. Where the black and white pictures come from, the light wasn't like. Yeah. Pictures. To be fair, like, when I'm doing, like, gig work and stuff, like, for bands, like, if a photo, like, doesn't look good, like, in colour, because of, like, motion blur and stuff, I will typically turn it black and white and see if it works like that. Good. Yeah, it can do, because it, it takes the amount of tones down from, like, eight or nine to, like, two. And then, like, you've got less to focus on, and it sort of tricks your mind thinking, oh, yes, it's better. Mm, it, but it's just because black and white just is what we do. Oh, yeah. And as someone who takes pictures, I was like, I know why you've done that. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, this is a question for you as well. Would you ever be interested in doing, like, a music video in black and white? I've, I've thought about doing exactly like Sin City. Yeah. With little bits of colour splash. Yeah. Yeah, it would be quite interesting because thinking about it, I don't think I've ever seen like a music video where it's been like primarily black and white. This, well, I, it was really weird. I literally just watched, I don't even know how I'd seen it. It was that aha video to take on me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the thing as well. Like, I'll always say, like, 
like video work, like especially in the editing side, will always be more difficult than photo work. Yeah. Like because there's so much more that goes into it. Like if you're like a photographer that you like use a Photoshop and like photo manipulation and stuff and like composites, then yeah, fair enough, that can take hours and even days. But like video work, like that takes longer. Like I've spent more time on like one music video than I have like on a shoot, like a set for hers, because like of how long it takes. Like it's mental. Do you see, I use a lot of fake camera movements. Yeah. <laughs> so like you shoot wider and then like bring it in more in video, won't you? I, I do a lot and you'll notice that now. Yeah. But I do that because it's sometimes hard to get that way to Yeah. But if I do it wider, I know I can go in and do them little bits. I did a lot for Magic's first video actually. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, cool. yeah, that was one in, yeah, that was the one in, um, Lawland as well, yeah, wasn't it? it yeah, better. That was when I first came, like, came across, um, Magic and, like, um, Shakara Gardens as well. Oh, yeah. To be fair, there are a lot of different things that I want to do, because initially my dream was get more gigs and just become more, like, better with my photography, and that's happening now, like, I've had more gigs, like, in the past, like, six, seven months than I can, like, even I can handle at times, and... The progression thing will always be like one of my dreams, like just keep progressing, keep getting better, learn more, meet more people. But if I was to become like a photographer for like a big venue or something, that'd be awesome. Like obviously like places like the O2 and that sort of thing, like being able to be like a main photographer for a venue like that size would be awesome. That's sort of the that's sort of the end game is not to be like a photographer for like just one specific venue, but to be like a photographer that a lot of people around the world know. If possible. Yeah. I mean, I'm always up for trying new things. Like, obviously, I said I'm trying weddings this year more, and obviously, I've got two booked for that. It's just trying more things and like trying to do as many different types of professional photography as I can. A fat twat. <laughs> <laughs> now, apart from that, um, like, I don't know. Like, I don't like saying like oh, I'm friendly and I'm good at what I do like even though like that's me just being confident like my brother says uh you're being cocky as fuck and it's like well I'm not like if I say that I'm good at what I do that's because I'm confident in what I do like me and it's also like I've had people like especially like if you're on my Facebook page and look at the reviews like I've not had one like bad experience with a client like I've always had like even in my hobby and stuff I've always had like positive feedback and stuff and it's come down to me giving myself like criticism like to push myself which is not something that a lot of people like have really they think oh, other people have got to give it give it to me whereas with myself i'm like no one else like everyone is too nice and they're like oh i like that it's like yeah but i'm not asking for you like to say it's nice i know it's nice but what don't you like about it like yeah that's what you really need to know yeah why is it shit? yeah why is it it's bad? Always, yeah, it, yeah. It's always it's always, so, always something wrong <laughs> with uh, like same with same with <laughs> a music video though. It's like going back to Joey again. Like he like when he was first doing his prom, like his promo video for like like his show reel, he sent me like the draft of it, and he was like, "What do you like about it?" I was like, "I like give me a couple of hours, and I'll get back to you because I'm really bad with it." A few days later, I got back to him. <laughs> I was like, apart from like the ending bit, which is like. A bit abrupt, like I really like it, and it's like, oh, well, I've already posted it now. <laughs> I was like, oh, sorry, man, <laughs> but yeah, that's my fault. Cause I'm bad at giving feedback myself. Not because I don't want to, like, I'm nice. It's just because I don't know what to say. Um, like, first person I have to like fan kids, man. Hey, um, or like my godmother. I call her my auntie, but she's my godmother, Chrissy. Like, um, when I was first starting out, a lot of like my learning came from her. Like, she suggested the first camera that I bought, which was the Canon Fetch Hundred D. And like, just those first like six months was so important that I had her there to learn me. Like, cause school, schools and colleges, they don't teach you anything. Like they can't teach you to be creative. Yeah, like they're like, oh, here's the process. Like I think the only thing I've learned out of like education from photography is how to use a studio setup. And even then, like it's rare that I use a studio cause I don't like using the studio. I'm more of a location person. But like, even like now, like, I'll still go like to to Chrissy's and just like throw ideas out there, get opinions on stuff like, and I've got a really good relationship with her. Like she's like the mother I never had really. But like um, apart from her, like in terms of people that, what was the question again? Who's like, helped me? Like it's just like obviously you've helped me a lot. Like obviously I've helped you a lot. There's a lot of different people like around the city that 
Like technically everyone that I've done a photo shoot for I could say that I've helped and that I've been there for me because they've given me a, a reason to do photos and hey, if it wasn't for them I wouldn't have done that to begin with. When nothing about people in front of them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, Fee, I'm helping you by doing this, you're helping me by doing this. Like, I'm awkward in front of the camera, but even this, like, I just found it to be really chill. And mm. even when I watch that video back, I know for a fact I'm just like, I don't like my face. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that's the difference. I don't like doing interviews, it's more of a film conversation. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not serious, it is like a laugh. Yeah, There's a, video, a videographer from Hull called Joey Hitchinson, and like, he's. He's a prick. Carry on. Oi. Joey alone. I always comment on it. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> that's your opinion. Like I like Joey. He, he's an, he's been a nice person to me. He knows I'm. Yeah. I say it in a good way. Yeah. He You're a dick. So <laughs> well, like, I think mean, Joey's really good. And he made a really good point to me. It's like you can do both, mm. but it's when you start focusing on one like like properly that you start to grow. Like he did both photography and videography, but. Like, um, he started focusing on videography and that's where he's really starting to shine. Like, I love his video work, it's brilliant. Like, yeah, he's got, he's got good work and that, that sticks with me, like, that's why I'm more focusing on photography now more than anything. Like, I still like doing video work, but it's not what I'm mainly focusing on. Awkward. <laughs> I'm more, like, in terms of pictures and stuff, I prefer being behind the camera. I do not like my face, I do not like my voice. But I, when this comes out, I will probably sit down and watch it. Just be like, I want to see how he's done it, I want to see how it's turned out. And I probably will like send it to like, I probably will try and get my mum to watch it if like, she's willing to. But like, I will show like my godmother it, I will show like people around that have watched it. Like that, well, we're willing to watch it anyways, but yeah. Do you feel lost without a camera? Mm, let's put it this way, if suddenly something happened, let's say like I lost both my arms and I wasn't able to take photographs anymore, I wouldn't know what to do with myself because I, even before, like, before photography I wanted to do, be an architect and that's sort of how I span into photography because I was doing graphic design originally at school and then at the end of year eight they were like well you did better in photography because you had to do uh, graphic design, art and photography if you were doing any of those and I did better in photography and the photography teacher I had was like well why don't you go into photography and see how you like it and that's what I did, I just kept with photography and if it wasn't for her, if it wasn't for, well, her name was Miss Chadwick, if it wasn't for her I wouldn't be doing it now and I got a lot of thanks for her because, a lot of thanks for my godmother but a lot of thanks for her because if it wasn't for her I wouldn't have had the initial push to do it. It just takes one person sometimes to push me yeah. a little bit. Yeah, like, because like, I realised that I wasn't bad at graphics design, I just wasn't the greatest. Whereas with photography, I was better at it, and like, that's what changed it. But if I was to lose both my hands or have something happen where I couldn't do photography, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. Like, I've only taken one break with my photography, and that was when my nan had died. Like, I, I hadn't taken a break in like five years at that point. And I was kind of like, well, I need, I. I need time to grieve, I've got to take a break. And I took three months off it and it was really weird, but I needed the time off just to like like mourn and that sort of thing. In gen like in general that I know. Just, yeah. It's a tough question that, to be fair, because if I say someone I know like someone's gonna get offended and stuff. It's like, oh well, what about me? It's, it's subjective. It's the it's the type of photography yeah. that has a different person who does perfect. Yeah. Like, oh, like people I instantly show people for weddings. Yeah. Like, that is the standard I hold to Yeah. Weddings. I mean, like, when it comes to video work, like, if anyone asks me, oh, is there any videographers that you know? Like, the first person that will pop to mind is Joey. Like, mm -hmm. straight away. Like, but, like, I think, I will mention, like, lots of people. Like, I mentioned you, I mentioned Joey. Like, well, those are just the people I know off the top of my head, but when it comes to photographers, regardless of like my thoughts on them and stuff, like I know like Alistair is a good one, like Dan's a good one. Someone that's covering my shift at Dixon Silver tonight called James Sutherland and he's he's really good. Tim Saxby's quite good. Um trying to think of any more. Um Paolo Diaz from Prop and Fuel was good as well. It's just that sort of like environment and stuff as well that you need like just knowing those sort of people. But in terms of like like general photography, like I don't shoot really shoot with anyone else, so I can't really say in terms of my hobby aside I don't really know anyone else. So who, who do you like follow on Instagram that you really like? 
there's I follow thousands of people. So <laughs> like I mean, there's a few from Hull, but it's like people I haven't shot with, so like I don't make the judgment. I make obviously I say, oh yeah, your photography is good, but it depends on the person as well. And what so I have a lot of different like. I have like three different portfolios, which is my website, my Facebook, and my Instagram. So I assume that you'll put up like my link tree link. But so on Instagram, you can find me at Joshua Eight Photography. On Facebook, you can find me at Temponics, which is spelled. Uh, I'm probably going to butcher this, you know, even though it's my own bloody brand. Um, it's T E M P O N I C S. It'll probably be put up like behind me or something. And same with my website, it. I mean, just Temponics again, but it's a Wix site that isn't paid for. So, if you want to go to my website or any of those, just go to my Linktree link, which is linktr.ee forward slash Temponics. It'll just take you to a link or a website that will have all of them there. Um, anything else you want to say? Thank you for having me. You're <laughs> it's all right. Finally got to sort this after like <laughs> months of discussing it. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't do it on my TV though. Yeah. I think this is going to wear my but... Yeah. Yeah. When's it coming out? <laughs> Years from now.